Overnight America, it is a Thursday morning on the broadcast, and you know every month we like to get together with Michael Bockich, the senior editor of Astronomy Magazine, and of course the guy who brings us Astronomy.com to talk about what's coming in the upcoming month. But every so often, we're graced with Michael's presence in the middle of the month because there's something special going on up in the sky, and tonight is one of those nights. And Michael Bockich, senior editor of Astronomy Magazine, thanks a lot for being with us. Always a pleasure, John. Sort of a special edition this uh, this morning on the program because we've got a meteor shower going on. What's up in the sky right now? That's right. This meteor shower is one of the annual ones. It's called the Lyrid meteor shower. It's called that because if you trace all the paths of the meteors back to one point in the sky that meet within the constellation Lyra, the harp. Now, the best time to see the meteors is in the pre-dawn hours. So, uh, depending on uh, your location, you can go out about, uh, oh, two, three hours before sunrise, set up a chair, take some cookies and coffee, and just look up. <laughs> that's, the, that's the best way to do it. Yeah, and a lot of times it is just as simple as that. And I know that there are people who say, oh, you know, do I need equipment? Do I need binoculars or something? Really, I guess with a meteor shower, we've talked about this before, anything that limits your field of vision is not good. That's right. A meteor shower should be watched just with your eyes, not with a telescope, not with binoculars. Now, that being said, about 15% of the lyrids leave smoke trails that can last several seconds because they're fast meteors. These bits of rock and dust are entering our atmosphere at about 107,000 miles an hour. So they burn up very quickly. And as I said, some of them can leave smoke trails. And it's kind of fun every now and then to, to follow one of those smoke trails through binoculars. Interesting stuff. Now, the constellation Lyra itself, I know, is there's a there's a star in there called Vega, which was made famous in the in the uh, in the, the Carl Sagan book and subsequent movie Contact. That was the star that Jodie Foster traveled to. That's right. They they kind of uh, uh, picked that star. In fact, even before that, uh, you and I can certainly remember this. Maybe some of your listeners can remember that Chevrolet named a car after uh, Vega called the Vega. Yes. Uh, the actual pronunciation of the star, and few people know this, is Vega. That's, of course, not the only thing Chevrolet got wrong with that star, but I'll just leave it there. <laughs> there you go. Well, and the, another thing people don't know is that, uh, you know, Chevrolet, sh the actual pronunciation of the name of the car is this thing's broken again. So <laughs> right. I don't know. I don't know how you get that out of those letters, but that's how it always was referred to. So but uh, the, now how long are we expected to see anything, any kind of activity with this shower? Because this one lasts for a couple of days. It will. It will last through the 25th. Uh, tonight, if you go out and your sky is nice and clear and reasonably dark, which means you're 30 or 40 miles away from a big city, um, you should see between 15 and 20 meteors per hour on average. Now, sometimes activity kind of spikes. Back in uh, 1982, observers counted 90 meteors an hour. So, you know, it can be anything between 15 and 90. Um, so, as I said, look upward. Uh, glancing around uh, the sky doesn't hurt at all, and uh, the best time to observe them is about uh, two to three hours before sunrise. And it should be a pretty decent night for stargazing just in general, because don't we have a, a fairly thin crescent moon at the moment? Indeed. Uh, full moon is Friday, and so the moon you know, won't be an issue until, goodness, it rises probably around an hour before sunrise. So you'll see a very thin crescent, and it won't scatter much light through the sky. Very good. All right. Well, we will send folks out. As a matter of fact, right now would be a good time to go out and grab that lawn chair, head out onto the front lawn, and or wherever you happen to be that's a, a nice dark place. And is it true that the darker the sky is or the darker things are around you, the more likely you are to be able to see things like those smoke trails? Because that's kind of fine detail. Absolutely. Not only that, but you can also see fainter meteors from a dark sky. So the better off you are because you'll you'll be able to catch just a little bit more and get an enhanced view. Excellent. Well, uh, we'll catch up with you again, uh, Michael, in just a couple of weeks and talk about what's going on up in the sky during the month of May. Sound good? I look forward to it, John. Outstanding. And in the meantime, if you want to know more about the map of the sky and if you want to see the dome itself and you want to know exactly where you're looking, just go online to astronomy.com. And don't forget to pick yourself up a copy of Astronomy Magazine at your favorite bookstore or newsstand. There is more to come as this Thursday morning rolls on. John Grayson here with you. Early morning, 
you're on Overnight America.